Well, it's been brought out, really, uh, to celebrate Capital's fourth birthday. <laughs> um, because I think it's the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> and only Capital should deserves it. It's, um, it's really written out of, uh, as Bill puts it, anger. But, uh, but frustration is probably the, the truest thing. We want very much to make a goodies film. And uh, we've been asked to make it, but for about five and nine pence. Um, in other words, a smaller budget than we for our television <laughs> programmes. And so we've written a goodies, uh, a script for a goodies film, but before that we thought we would write a book which was really predicting what would happen to our film when we got around to doing it. Actually it's got sillier and sillier and it is a very silly book, but um, at the moment we're on chapter three in real life, which is raising the money. And also I think like everybody else, we're sort of film Grand snobs. Speech. Um, yes. Everybody assumes that it's more satisfying, more fun yeah. to make a feature film yeah. than it is to make a television programme. Mm -hmm. Probably that's not true. It's arguable, isn't it? Because in fact a lot of people who are in movies are trying to get into television these mm. days. Actually, mm. judging from our book, it's absolute hell in movies. Yes, yes. Well, well everyone comes in for a battering in the they book. Do, I mean, they? it's yeah. quite <laughs> amusing if you follow film criticism. Yeah. How did you go about putting the book together? Because it seems to me it's a kind of collection of everybody's doodles. Um, well, d does it seem like that? That's interesting, actually, because, I mean, it, it's, it's put together with an overall scheme. I mean, we actually sort of virtually wrote it as a story, which is one of the differences, by the way, from uh, the previous books. You know, the, the last two books we've done have been sort of montages, you know, and as Tim was making a parallel, in fact, with television, where we used to write sketch shows, lots of different pieces, little bits and pieces, and then when we started writing the goodies, we tried to keep the same sense of humour but with a storyline. And this is exactly what we've done in this book. If I can now take you back over the last four years, you have been good friends of Capital Radio's. Let's go back to, for example, Super Spike with uh, you, Bill. Yes. Do you think that was successful? We no. No, I don't think it was successful. Lost us the Olympics. <laughs> Literally lost us the Olympics. No, I don't think it was success uh, successful. I think there were a lot of other reasons for that. I mean, it seems to me... Not that easy for that to say. <laughs> in that particular case, I mean, athletics is, is unfortunately a sport which only has a sort of one week life. You know, it's one of the points we're trying to make at the time, that the public are totally apathetic about it for most of the year and then suddenly are incredibly chauvinistic during the Olympics or the European Cup or something like that and then don't care a damn about it afterwards. And, you know, and, and I'm afraid that proved to be the case. Uh, to a certain extent, I think the athletes, uh, and I think some of them would agree with this. Frank Bill says you've got to cash in on the week when people think about it, because Super yeah. Spike was not raising money to send people to Montreal. It was raising money was to send people thing, yeah. for, the, for the next Olympics. Yes, quite, yeah. Really. Well, well, something else that all of you have worked towards is the kind of preservation of the dwarf gibbon. Tell that's us how yeah. this is getting on. As far as we know, that's really been quite successful. Mm -hmm. I think they, uh, uh, you know, they, there's people that we sent off to um, Sumatra to study this it's highly endangered species. We've got we to send them, them off. They well, we help, to yeah, no, quite. <laughs> 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 You've got to go to Sumatra. <laughs> Here's the money, get out of here. But, um, Frank Sumatra. But apparently <laughs> they've, um, they did a lot of important research work there. And, they, you know, the net result is a long-term thing. But um, they've done a lot of research work on, the, on that endangered species and hopefully it stands a better chance of surviving than it would have done. It was basically to encourage the people not to eat the dwarf gibbons, That's which they right. won't, you know. Yeah. I now eat the people that we send out. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, I hope What's not. happened to your kind of pop image? Have you abandoned this? It's exploded. Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of news. <laughs> I, think, I think the pop image is, is actually a relevant statement. We suddenly hated the fact that we had an image uh, yeah. in pop. It was fun to do the in-betweeners and the Funky Gibbon and the New Goodies LP. And then it suddenly became, we were on the treadmill and can we get onto the playlist? And all that, the paraphernalia of, of pop, which has got nothing to do with the music at all. And it sounds very, I don't know, snobby, but it's a shame if you lose the enjoyment of, of yeah. producing the record. So we have stepped aside. Yeah. Let's just and end with, with, <laughs> with a bit that I actually did find very funny, the Hammer Blood Chart. The various shades. The Hammer Blood Chart. And it's, uh, it's for film, movie, makeup, blood. That's the whole joke, you see. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like one of those Dulux paint 
advertisement exactly. with the different shades of red and exactly. the Can you tell us that? Well, uh, there's the heavy sell at the start. Want to get that oh-so-important shade just right. Want to avoid the nightmare of blood that clashes with the costume? Then don't be a clot. Don't just make up your mind on the spurt of the moment. Let Hammer Blood help you choose the colour that suits the mood. Blood for every occasion that'll draw appreciative screams, gasps and wretches. Do it right with Hammer Blood. After all, nobody wants to be a silly bleeder. And then the various <laughs> shades are... Uh, you ought to see it, you ought to see it. Dracula's Delight, Blood Bath, Corpuscle Punishment, Royal Blue, Blood Count, Red Mist, Midnight Feast, Kensington Gore, Uncle Rhesus, Heartbroken, UFO Juice, that's green, in lighter vein and about time too. Peckin Par Pink, horrific hemoglobin, and hello suckers. <laughs> uh, is bright uh, shade of pink, which is approximately the same colour as my face at the moment. <laughs> well, thank That's you for coming juice, in, huh? and if I can now kind of turn the stomachs the right way up again, <laughs> ask you to sing us a happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Capital Radio for your ninth day. Happy birthday, birthday to you. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know actually if they turn the last time was the right way up with their harmonies. Oh. I thought that was absolutely delightful.